Hello everybody and welcome back. So in the previous video we created this very simple shader that would allow us to apply uh, texturing to you know a surface by uh, supporting things such as uh, an alpha mask and allowed it to uh, apply a flip to the texture in the S or T coordinates which as I mentioned map to the UV coordinates that we're so used to. Uh, and uh, by using that and using uh, Rendeman Studio when we imported the shader, it created this user interface here, which is usable, but it's not really what you would need because, for example, this controllers right here, use alpha, flip S, and flip T, they're usually switches instead of sliders. And, for example, the map lookup, instead of having this nice little browsing icon, you actually have to know what the texture path is, so it's not really user-friendly. So let's look right now at how you can write uh, shaders that Rendeman Studio will understand and will parse user interface properly. So this is the shader that I had written in the previous, uh, in the previous video. And we're going to go ahead and add here a little bit of uh, metadata that Slim can use. So we're going to go here and we're going to uh, put it all inside a comment and that's usually how this metadata thing is done. So inside this uh, comment area, uh, and it's basically this is something that the compiler will skip completely, but retain it in some way, uh, it basically will not affect the flow of the code. We're going to go ahead and type uh, slim to appearance slim and then we're going to open brackets then we're going to do instance surface simple texture simple texture now what is this that I'm typing basically this is tickle code which is another programming language which is what slim and the old m products product they, most of it was all written in tickle and you had to use uh, you had to use Tickle if you wanted to write your own uh, Slim widgets or Slim nodes that would allow you to build shaders. And basically, what the guys at Pictures have done is they have uh, extracted all of that code which they have they've had working for years, and they've embedded it into the compiler and into uh, Rendeman Studio. So now, by using that language uh, and the file structure that a lot of people that have been using uh, M2R and Slim for years, they already know it. Uh, you can very quickly define a user interface for your shader in this new Renderman Studio. Uh, so uh, this you can copy verbatim. I don't think you need to worry right now what it means. Uh, just go ahead and copy. And now we're going to get into uh, the meat and potatoes of what we need to do here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the keyword parameter. And then we're going to tell it the parameter type. So we're going to tell it the first one is parameter float and it's KD. So basically what we're doing is we're going to, in this block of code, we're going to define the user interface for this parameter right here, uh, as you can see by the name. As you can also see right after the name of each one of these, I have a space. Because if you put it this way, it's going to fail. Uh, that's one of the things that, one of the gotchas for tickle. So make sure that you have a space right here at the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell it the label. And KD is something a little bit obscure for people, so we're going to put diffuse. Nice little label for people to read. And then we're going to tell it that the default the default is 0 0.8 and then if you want it you could do something such as range uh, and tell it that the range of this value is going to be from 0 if you don't want any diffusity. Uh, let's say to 10. That's the pipeline requirements. You can only go up to 10. And then you're going to tell it what the increment, uh, how the slider can increment. And I'm going to tell it you can increment by, by 0 0.1 values. This might not always be what you want, but I just wanted to demonstrate how this works. Um, uh, next thing down here, we're going to go ahead and do parameter, color, surface, color. Well, we're going to do label, diffuse color. Default, we're going to give it a default value of 0 0.5. And in Tickle, you have to give it the triple values. And we're going to 
uh, keep moving down. And this one is going to be interesting because it's going to give us something really nice. So now we're going to do parameter string map. Now we're going to give it a label. And you don't have to give it a label, like you don't have to give it all this stuff, but it's actually a good idea to take advantage of it. So label, we're going to do texture. And you can even turn texture map, right? And now you're going to use, uh, you can use something like a description. You can do description. Choose, let's use quotes here. Choose a tx file and then we're going to do type or actually it's called subtype because the type is over here it already knows it's a string but the subtype we're going to tell it that it's a texture and that's a little bit of magic that it's going to do for us so we're going to do is texture and then right here we're going to tell it the default value is going to be empty and we are going to go ahead and move on to the next parameter. We're going to use uh, parameter float use alpha label. And actually this one, you know, because of the name, we can probably leave the label out. We're just going to do subtype and we're going to tell that the subtype is a switch. And we're going to tell it the default is one. Same thing for the next ones, parameter float flip s open this and then we're gonna do this subtype switch default zero and we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this because I'm taking too long to type this. Right. So now we have created pretty much the whole user interface. Uh, let's go ahead and compile and try to bring this back into Maya. And if we do a reload, uh, if it didn't change, that means that we have an error somewhere. And let's see if it reports it over here. Um, I don't see it reporting it, so let's try to find what we did wrong. And you can comment things out in Tickle by using the pound sign. So usually what I like to do is I like to do uh, comment out this whole area. Let's comment out all the way up to here. And let's make sure that we type things properly. Oh, actually, what I forgot to add, you have to add one extra node here on top, which is where you're telling it that this is a metadata. So you're going to do meta ID equals slim. And then you're going to close this. And then you're going to open up this flag right here. You're going to tell it C data and put another square bracket right there. And then we're going to go all the way to the end once we finish with this. We're going to close the two brackets, close that sign, and then close the meta. Okay, let's give this another compile and let's try to load it in Maya. Reload. Okay, so we lost the other parameters, but you see that the diffuse now is no longer KD and diffuse color is no longer like just surface color. So that means that this worked. So let's go ahead and uncomment this. And I'm just going to go ahead and select this all the way up here. Delete those. And recompile. And I'm going to go ahead and do a reload here. So there you have it. So we now we have pretty much the same shader as before, but we have a better and more usable user interface. So now I don't have to remember in the previous video, if you guys saw me, I had to go and find the texture by, by going to my next tab over here and copy and pasting this and typing some stuff. I don't have to do that anymore because now I have a nice user interface for this. So I'm going to be able to navigate to where my images are and uh, 
let's go ahead and actually let's go back go up a couple of levels go to where I have my textures and find it to texture.txt now you're probably gonna have to change this to all files and select the texture TX and now you drop it in there and it works uh, if I render I'm gonna do a couple of tests ah it's flipped so now all I have to do is click here I don't even have to type the value of one and it flips it and if I tell it that I don't want to use the alpha it's gonna go ahead and ignore the alpha so where you saw me type all of these different commands over here you know and basically I've been writing these things long enough so I know a lot of this uh, from the top of my head but if you wanted to learn where this is at basically what you would do is you would look at the documentation of Renderman Studio 3 and if you look here on the left hand side you're gonna have uh, the studio tools uh, under Renderman for Maya actually under slim you're gonna expand it slim under templates there's templates there's gonna be a file format here at the end and basically this page right here is the one that explains uh, the context of the different things that you can support so for example where you saw me do parameter let's look find the word parameter um, here under keywords now let's do next okay so parameter here is is bundled under the property because there's different things that you can do you can have collections attributes tour attributes and or whatnot so that's where parameter is and basically uh, here's more information uh, if we did something like uh, where is it uh, under file format it's probably down here uh, you see we use default a couple of times so that's where default is uh, we use description in one location that's where it is it tells you uh, it tells you on which context you can use it like for example uh, there's certain things you can only use inside a parameter uh, there are things you can use inside a parameter in a collection and we're probably gonna have another video that ex really explains how to write slim templates this is kind of an overview of how you can make things a little bit better uh, and then uh, so if you keep looking down here uh, let's look for that subtype so subtype is down here and basically it tells you that you're gonna have to give it the value subtype and then some value right next to it and then here it tells you the values can be slider vertical slider switch selector big string or you know whatever and it is supported by property and what is property well property as we saw over here property supports parameters collection attributes and tour attributes so I know that this video is a little more specific for a very specific uh, product such as uh, Renderman Studio and uh, Pixar's Renderman product um, I hope that we can do one like this for uh, 3D Lite or some other uh, renders uh, but I just wanted to cover this because you're probably gonna see me use it and you're probably gonna see this on our source code when we publish it on our github account and I just wanted to make sure that you knew where this was coming from um, so so there you have it this uh, method allows you to customize your user interface a little bit to make it a little bit more user-friendly uh, and uh, at the end of the day as a shader developer you tend to want to do do that you want to make your shader as user-friendly as possible for the consumer which tend to be uh, either uh, finishers effects artists or uh, look dev artists people that do uh, look development uh, so that's all for this video uh, thank you very much and we'll see you in another one